Buenas noches, todos, todos, todas. It is a, a big pleasure to be welcoming you all tonight, another time for another uh, La Triennale uh, public program. This is becoming a uh, tradition now because it's our third program uh, hosting you uh, on a Wednesday evening to launch one of the one of the online artist projects that are being commissioned and that are being uh, launched uh, at this time as the beginning of La, Estamos, Estamos Bien, La Triennale 2021, El Museo's one year long initiative, uh, which is a, a El Museo's first nationwide Latinx uh, survey exhibition. So tonight we have a, a quite packed agenda and uh, so I'll try to be brief in my introduction. So uh, I want to first of all introduce Jime Izquierdo Ugas, who's the artist who's uh, joining us tonight. <laughs> And uh, Hime, uh, we're, uh, we're launching their project, Se Que Fue Así Porque Estuve Ahí. I know it was like that because I was there, uh, which is a wonderful ongoing photographic archive that is uh, premiering at an online platform uh, tonight as one of our artists uh, online. Project, so I want to thank you so much, Hime. I also want to introduce some of our other uh, uh, speakers who will be joining Hime, uh, uh, starting with uh, uh, I'm, so I have it right here. So six or six. All right. So starting with. Uh, it's Sama Huerta, who's uh, the, the, the web designer who created the platform. Bianca Lugo, uh, uh, it's Sama is, uh, Jime is in Lima, it's Sama is in, in Puebla, in Mexico. Uh, Bianca Lugo, who's one of the sitters, one of the, one of the portrait people in, in the work, who's in uh, Crown Heights in New York. Uh, and my dream, draw, my dream, uh, who's in uh, Miami, Florida, also Elia Alba and Susanna Temke, my co-curators at La Triennale. So thank you all for being here. I think that was a good warm up. I just want to make one quick note about uh, the supporters of the show. It's very important. The, the show is made possible by the Jack and Natasha Gelman Foundation and leadership support is provided by the Rockefeller Brothers Fund with generous funding provided by the Lily Ochintwas Foundation, Lee Norgi, Tony Foundation, Tony Bechara and the Triennale Council. So thank you all our supporters. Thank you all our speakers and our, our speakers and our audience tonight. And I wanted to start by uh, asking him it, a little bit to share with us a little bit tonight about the, the not so much about the process of creating the, the online platform, which I'm sure we will talk about in a minute, but maybe starting with uh, the role of photography, right? So Seke Fuyasi is, a, is an ongoing photographic archive. Uh, I was just asking him about how many sitters uh, probably, they asked me, it's probably around uh, 60. Uh, and it's people from their chosen family, people from their very close, intimate circle of relationships, living everyday life, hanging out, enjoying New York City between 2017 and 2020. Between New York initially and now also Lima, in Peru. Uh, so I remember we visited you uh, several months ago, many moons ago. We went to, we went to 
bad style, if I'm not wrong. And we went to your studio and you showed, you know, several works you were doing with poetry. So I know photography is not like the only uh, aspect of your practice, but you're also a writer. You're also a, uh, you're interested in embroidery. You're interested in clothing. You're interested in several, several different things. And I le and you mentioned the, the images. We saw some of them in the, on the screen when we were there, but then we went back home and you shared a link to a Google Drive. And then I saw that body of images, that body of work. And I have to say, I was really knocked out by it because it's really, really poignant. It's really, really urgent and really beautiful. So I don't want to uh, occupy much of the time. Uh, just to ask you, what's the role of photography? What's this project? What is this, uh, this project in your overall practice? Um, yeah, so photography has a really important um, role in my life, I would say. Um, I think I started taking photographs when I was, um, when my family first immigrated to the United States. Um, we moved to Miami when I was about nine years old and um, we, during that time, those disposable cameras were like really, really popular um, and they were cheap. So um, we would take a lot of photos with those documenting kind of like th that moment in time where we were transitioning um, from what feels like a totally different world to another, you know, from moving from Peru. Um, well, Ocean's here too. <laughs> um, moving from Peru, which is where I'm, I'm living again now, um, to Miami, it was like a huge culture shock. And so, I see photography as a way of archiving, of documenting, um, and especially when it comes to this project, thinking about uh, creating an archive of my queer family, of my queer family's resilience, um, beauty, um, in our everyday lives. I feel like that uh, was really special to me. Uh, and that's kind of how the project started, because I wanted to, um, I wanted to have a record um, of them, you know, and for a long time, I was really afraid to take portraits of people. I like got really shy and I would sometimes take pictures of people like with like from far away. <laughs> but um, this project pushed me to ask permission to do that. Um, because it can be intense for someone to, to take your take your portrait. It's like, you know, a document of your spirit of your of your moment in time. And so, yeah, that's that's a little bit of how. I feel like the role of photography um, in this project, because yeah, yeah, there are a lot of different practices, um, and photography is one one of them, and it's some it's very connected to my other work for sure. Like I think the writing and the embroidery are very tied to my photography. Um, so yeah. So Hime, I'm wondering um, if maybe I think everyone is really eager to jump into the website and I'm wondering if we could maybe you could share your screen and I wanted to link it back to what you were just saying about um, the poetry that you do because it's really interesting you have a really beautiful sort of introductory text in which you touch on some of those topics like uh, responsibility which I think is a really interesting word that you use in it uh, but then we also have texts from all of your, your family that's part of it. So you're both writing and somehow you've gotten um, your family to write as well. So I don't know if you wanna, maybe that's a way for us to, to jump into the site. For sure, yeah, I guess before I share my screen, um, yeah, it was really important to me to include um, the voices of um, my family, my fam, because, you know, we, I feel like especially now, um, like our queer and trans community, especially like queer and trans people of color are becoming more visible in media. Um, we, we've like, we've always existed, but um, the more the more visible we become, it sometimes can feel like very extractive where folks are kind of like taking it from us um, when they're not always from our community or don't always represent us the way we want to be represented. And so it was really, really important for me that in this project, I like, made sure to include everyone's um, voice and their experience in, in it. Um, so yeah, I'll say that um, as we go into the, the website. And I want to give a shout out to Itzamna, who, who will come in a little later. But um, 
they designed this website and it's so beautiful and I'm excited to, to share it with you. So let's get into it. So here we go. <laughs> um, this is the landing page uh, or the homepage. Um, I, I was convinced by Elia, Susanna to include a picture of myself, which I thought was like a really beautiful um, thing. I wasn't, I, I wasn't expecting to do that. And I feel like it really brought everything together. Um, because one thing that's important to me about this project is that I feel like so many of the portraits are also a reflection of myself. Um, and that's kind of the, the, also touching on the title, you know, thinking about what it means to be in presence of each other and like allow, allow ourselves to just be. Um, so yeah, okay, so um, cool. So this is the landing page and um, if you wanna read more, so um, Susanna, you mentioned a statement, it's right at the bottom here and it's also in Spanish, so you can read it in Spanish too. Um, and cool. So, oh, here's the gallery. So this is the gallery. <laughs> um, it's, you know, as Rodrigo was saying, like there's 60 or more sitters in this project. So um, there's about 42 portraits in this gallery, um, but in the archive, there's like over 200 photographs um, that I've taken over the past three years between New York, Miami, Boston, um, now um, Peru and Lima. Um, so it also makes me feel like so <laughs> held that I have so much chosen family um, kind of spread around them. And even today, like we're here from, from a lot of different places in the world. So I think that's really beautiful. And I think it's um, amazing for us to see uh, the virtual archive. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about this idea of the archive, but uh, sitting behind you on your wall, we see some more of your, your family behind you. So it's like a meta experience we're all having. <laughs> yes, I have some of the portraits here actually on my wall. Um, that I, you know, I also like brought them into my space so they could be here with me because I just moved here um, by myself on, in February um, after living for 20 years in the United States. So it's been a, a really, um, I don't even know what adjective to use, <laughs> a really intense and amazing experience for sure. Um, so I'll just scroll a little bit through this and then I wanted to play um, a few of the portraits. So um, I, I asked um, the sitters to respond to the prompt, um, which is uh, how would you describe the person in this portrait? And so the audio and text that you're about to see and hear um, are those responses um, to that prompt which I want to give a shout out to Cristobal, who I don't know if Cristobal is here, but um, they're also one of the sitters who, their picture is, where is it? It's right here. <laughs> one thing, uh, yeah. for those who are watching us, if you have like a headphone now, it's a good time to, to put it on to really experience the audios that uh, he was about to play from the, from the website. Oh, thank you, Rodrigo. Um, but yeah, Cristobal, who's here um, dressed as Buffy on um, last Halloween, um, was really supportive of me during this project and helped me to, to land at this prompt as well. So yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to that. Oh, and I also want to shout out um, Cisne, who designed this beautiful little fab icon. That I don't know if you all can see here on the little um, tab of the website. Um, and I also got a tattoo today <laughs> um, to mark this moment. So thank you, Cisne. Um, cool, so I'll share. What, what is the icon? So um, it's a, the icon is a rose inside a flower pot. Um, and so I, I got that here, but I kind of just wanted something that made it feel like home. Um, and I have a lot of plants in my home and they are really grounding for me. And so um, I like hit up season like maybe four days ago and I was like, can you design a flower pot um, for the fab icon? And they came up with this beautiful um, drawing. So that's what you see there. Um, cool. So this is a photograph of Omololu, um, who is an per incredible person, musician, um, and spirit. And here's, we'll listen to the audio now. Ooh, she be fire. Ooh, she be sun kissed. Daughtering the sun, teaching heat her moves. Glisten, glisten, glide. Pour into the divine, 
Moonlight me's. Moonlight me's. Moonlight me's. Moonlight me's. Arise. Oof. This heat is needed. Oof. This heat is needed. Um, I love this portrait so much because this was, as the title says, Amololu's first time at Reese. And uh, for those who don't know about Reese Beach, it's like this queer beach um, in New York. It's like an incredible place. I've never experienced anything like that in my life, um, where it's literally just like a, a beach of queer and trans folks, like intergenerational. Um, and it's a place where I've, I've, I've felt very safe. And it was really beautiful to bring Amololu to this place for the first time. Um, and in the text, um, they say like, moonlight me, moonlight me's. Um, that's because when we went, we went swimming that day, um, Omarolo kept asking me to like, <laughs> to, do, have you all seen Moonlight? Um, you know, that scene where um, the, the father is holding, or I guess not his father, but he's holding him in the water, like from the, from the small of his back. Um, he's holding little in the water from his mom's back. So Amorolo was asking me to do that, to hold them from the small of their back. Um, and I ended up writing this poem called Moonlight Me um, about that moment of being, of being asked to like, hold them. And so um, I guess going back to like thinking about how poetry and phot photography come back to each other, like that's a moment um, where that was very clear for me. Um, cool, I'm gonna show a couple more. Um, this is a portrait of Edwa. Uh, who is my sister um, and also an incredible artist and performer um, who also really inspired me to return to um, South America. Um, she also returned to Colombia um, last year. And so um, we have, we've always had a connection of, of both being like queer immigrant um, femmes and, and what that felt like. And so, yeah. And this is a photo that I took right after their performance, which was like the last performance they did in New York. Um, which was in the park in, in Queens. So here you go. Edward, Edward, Edward. Esta es una Edua decidida. A esta Edua se le desplomó el suelo y esa caída libre la arrojó al momento preciso que esta imagen captura, con tierra en el ombligo, momentos después de entregar las uñas a un hallazgo performance y días antes de trasladar su vida de New York a la montaña, Circasia. Esa casi sonrisa esconde entre las muelas miedos, incertidumbres, morriña y felicidad, y así mismita tragando entre mugre mil emociones es una Edua decidida. Dando pasos firmes, pasos a ciegas. Tras esta cámara está su familia y la nostalgia. Personas que se entreacogieron para cuidarse y cultivarse, hermanas ramas de un resistente árbol tropical que echó raíz en la tundra. Tras esta imagen se abrazan fuerte en gratitud. En este retrato figura la despedida y las últimas visiones de un capitulazo fundamental en la vida e historia de Edua. De lo que viene, solo figura la opacidad. <laughs> wow, I love that audio. I, I just love listening to everyone's voices. Um, it's really beautiful to, to get to hear them and, and, and look at them, especially now that we're all in very different places. Um, I, one other thing that for this project was that I asked folks um, to kind of just respond in whatever language and whatever way they, they wanted. Um, so that was really important to me as well. There's some folks that actually made music for this, um, for this project in response. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure to allow folks to kind of express in whatever way they needed um, and, and wanted to. Um, so, Thank yeah. you. There's such a, um, like a sense of exploration with the site because there's so many um, portraits and then sometimes the audio is not always the same as the text. So even within a certain, um, when you're looking at a certain person, you still get these multiple um, layers to them. You hear their voice, you hear the text. 
then there's another text or there's music, like you were saying. Um, and I feel almost like I'm eavesdropping on your chosen family, like you've allowed us into this world a bit. Um, so I don't know if on that note, something that's so amazing about your practice is how collaborative you are. And we do have a number of your collaborators here with us. So maybe we should start to introduce some of them as well. And I want to encourage everybody. Um, I see the chat is filled with love and it's amazing. So please feel free to keep doing that. But if you have questions too, we'll take those questions at the end. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I am really excited to be here um, with Bianca Lugo, who is my sister, my sibling. Um, we lived together for over four years and um, they're kind of like low-key the muse of this project because <laughs> um, since we lived together for so long, like we were just constantly in creation together, I feel like. So I'm excited that they're here. Um, they're also an incredible creator, farmer, stylist, like jeweler, um, everything. So um, they're here today. Um, me, Madrina is here today from Miami, um, reporting from Miami, <laughs> um, who was also an incredible like sister to me and um, I'm excited to be sharing this space with her today. Um, she's also an incredible artist. I have her art here on my wall. You can see it, but it's in my kitchen. Um, an educator and and also here with Prince, who's actually right here, <laughs> um, <laughs> who is also one of the sitters who, yeah, has also become my sister since I moved here to back to Peru. Um, and it's, it's not, yeah. And um, yeah, it's just a really special, really special like, part of my life. Um, incredible dancer. And Itzamna Huerta is also here, um, who designed the website. And I'll definitely tap in to talk to them a little more about that um, in a second. But yeah, so I guess um, I would love to quickly play maybe um, all, all their um, like writing and, and audio. And then we can come in and, and talk a little bit amongst ourselves, if that's OK. That's OK. Okay, perfect. So I'll do that really quick. Cool. Oh, here we go. Here's Bianca. <laughs> All right, let's go. A few days before this photo was taken, my then soon to be ex took a photo of me at the beach. He took the photo from below so that my ass was a focal point and said, I want you to see you how I see you. He laughed and so did I in an effort to hide my discomfort, a habit I'm working to break. I honestly don't know if he understood or would understand objectification and romantic relationships to be harmful. I don't know that he would see the link between persistent objectification and the belief that value is primarily based on physical appearance or the negative effect that has on a person's sense of self or self-worth. But I heard these words as final confirmation that he was incapable of affirming me in other ways just as regularly. Here I am on the rooftop of my friend's apartment, overlooking the place I was born. In the fog of a recent breakup somewhere between grief and relief, feeling seen as I see myself for the first time in a long time. Thank God for friends who see you and show you who you are. Friends who reflect you back to yourself. Right into my dream. Baited by my desire to be desired. Wait. We'll come back to that one. Okay, this is Prince. Prince, ¿te acuerdas cuántos años pasamos sin sonreír? O sea, tú sabes, sonreír de verdad, sentirnos vivas. ¿Te acuerdas? Fueron muchos. Así que no te olvides de lo enamoradas de la vida que estamos cada vez que sonreímos. No te olvides de mí, no te olvides de ti y sobre todo nunca te olvides de nosotras. Te amo. De mí para ti, de ti para mí y de mí para mí. Wow, this photo looks like decades ago. Who is this? 
Still, I smile. When I look at the person in this portrait, I see a girl who wants a girlfriend so bad. My fashion choices are entirely motivated by my desire to be desired. See how gay I am? Peep the pose. Peep the rainbow bracelet. See how cool I am? I'm here with a group of some of the coolest people in Brooklyn. We got matching berets. Oh, sure. I'm into Zodiac stuff. Look at my necklace. I'm a Taurus. My rising? Uh... The person in this portrait is trying so hard to look and act like what she assumes it is to be a gay black woman. Today I no longer wear the Taurus necklace. The big face wristwatch is broken and gone. Beret returned. Rainbow bracelet covered with dust on the dresser. The person in this portrait didn't know yet that her performance wasn't necessary. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> um, cool. I wanted to share those with you all. Um, yeah, so I would love to hear from Bianca, Medrine, Prince. Um, just, yeah, like what, what was your experience um, being photographed, also having to answer this prompt? Um, yeah, just how are you in, like, engaging with this project? Y ver, um, estoy preguntando este, cuál fue tu experiencia siendo retratada uh -huh. y escribiendo uh -huh. um, tu experiencia con el proyecto en general, ¿no? Uh -huh. Pero voy a abrirlo, así que... Ya, yeah. whoever wants to... You can just um, turn your mic on and respond. Yes, I can go first. Um... I was saying earlier when we were doing the, the tech run um, that this was very difficult for me. Um, I actually pulled an all-nighter recording this <laughs> because I was so stressed. Um, yeah, that, that moment, that black and white photograph, that moment for me um, really marked like a turning point in my expression of my queerness. It was taken right after I got out of a relationship with uh, this hetero man who I finally realized was not capable of seeing me as I saw myself. Um, and that day that was taken on the 4th of July. Um, <laughs> and it was a beautiful day um, that like started early and went into the early morning hours, just filled with like beautiful queer family. Um, and it really felt like a return to myself. Um, it was an important day and it was difficult for me to write about that knowing that it would be like shared in such a public way um, but that process helped me to process <laughs> that relationship in a way um, and so I'm really grateful um, he met I'm really grateful to you for pushing me to do that um, and for giving me the opportunity to express myself and to be seen thank you <laughs> I can go next. Um, oof. like I, when I was writing the uh, prompt, I was I didn't feel uh, any. I didn't feel much emotion. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna have fun. I was really nervous making it. Um, but just hearing it now and knowing that it's in front of a group of folk. Um, some people that I know here, it, it gave me, I, this was the first time I felt some sort of emotion because I think it just hit me how vulnerable that prompt was. I was like, whoa, that was really, really, really personal. Um, so thinking about that and also thinking about that night, I mean, Hime and Bianca, you all know that if I'm, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being asked to come out, to go out not come out the closet but like like go out <laughs> it's, be it's because um i have to like know where we're going what the, how are we gonna get there what time is it like who's gonna be there you know so um that night was another night of me just wanting to just be in my apartment not wanting around not wanting to be around folk and he may always had a great way of like 
drawing me out of my darkness a little bit. Um, that moment was a was a rough time in Brooklyn where I was definitely like questioning why am I here? Who am I? You know, I don't want to go out, you know, and then like so I show up to the apartment and Bianca has all these berets and they're like, Majin, you're part of the crew here. You wear this one. I'm like, what? I didn't come here for this. But <laughs> you know, so um we ended up at a bar and you know, even the red jacket, the red shirt that you all see me in that image, that was given to me by him. Eh? I think that night, <laughs> you know, it's like, here, wear this. So it's like this idea of family, not only just in community, but like, you know, I think him knew that I needed to be around you all. I needed to be there. Um, but because like I mentioned in the prompt, like this is someone who was just desperate for something you know whether it's job security love friends something you know so so I was just trying my best to just do whatever I could to be seen but at the same time I don't know um if I was ready to really really be myself so I was very performative you know like you know okay look cool do this wear this wear that and I'm just like so when I see that picture I was like wow I was trying really hard back then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I appreciate at, with that, me being in that state, I still felt a level of comfort and love. And, you know, I think about that night with love, you know, so I appreciate that. I mean, it speaks a lot about your relationship um, with the photo with Ime, right? Um, I think uh, it's uh, being a photographer myself, I think at times, I think I always get the better picture when I know the person because the guard is already down um, and you allow yourself to be vulnerable. Um, and that's that really beautifully, that comes across really beautifully in the images. And also the way some of the, the sitters are looking directly at you like they're not really looking directly at you they're really looking at you <laughs> Ime, so yeah. yeah that's right um yeah i just feel like it was so it's been so important um to to be able to build like this photo album <laughs> family photo album for myself you know like i feel like as queer children, as queer and trans like children and like young people, um, at least for me, I felt like I was always looking for family because uh, I felt like in my blood family, I wasn't really, and still to this day in some ways, like just allowed to be, <laughs> um, to just express um, as I am. And so, um, yeah, I feel like that's why this, a project has been so special to me is because I feel like I really want to allow folks to just be um, and and show like like I think my, my dream yesterday you wrote something like um, Kima has me looking like a model but I'm like I see you like this like you are a model like you all are gorgeous as fuck and I'm just here like documenting that you know like I think I literally couldn't have made this project without you all because you are you are the art. <laughs> Um, pero, pero no quiero dejarte a ti. Um, sí, si quieres buscar también la pregunta. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Um, estoy muy nervioso. Um, ¿Tú vas a traducir? Sí, sí, tú hablas. Pero, ok. Yo um, te, te pago. Ok. okay. <laughs> so, um, she was just saying that she's very nervous. Yeah, because um, esta exposición, estas fotos tienen un antes y un después y hace un año Jimé me envió un mensaje por Instagram y no nos conocíamos. <laughs> so, y, wait. Mm -hmm. So, Prince is saying um, that this, this exhibition is really um, poignant because for her, like, there's a before and after this photograph, this photograph, right? Um, um, and she was saying that about, about a year ago, I hit up Prince on Instagram. I just, like, de her. <laughs> sí, ahora nos vemos cada semana y ayer nos hicimos las uñas. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, 
porque nunca antes en mi vida había conocido a alguien con la energía de Jime que se da la oportunidad de amar intensamente y siempre nos han enseñado a que eso debe ser cortado o no debe ser mostrado al mundo y yo soy igual. Ok, let me continue. Um, so, <laughs> they're just saying that, yeah, like, I DM'd them a year ago and now we see each other every week. And just yesterday we went to get our nails done um, together and they were just saying that, I feel, I feel funny translating this because it's about me, but I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> They they were just saying that um, they haven't met someone like me before, um, where that is someone who loves so intensely, and if, and she feels like we've been taught to not do that or to not show ourselves in those ways, and I, but also um, she's the same way, and so yeah, finding each other has been really special because of that. Okay, entonces uh, hay dos fotos mías en la exposición tomadas el mismo el mismo día. El día de mi cumpleaños, eh, sí, por la cuarentena yo perdí mi trabajo y Jimé celebró mi cumpleaños aquí. Entonces, uh, eso fue como muy importante para mí. Pero luego, okay. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> there's two portraits of Prince um, in, this, um, in this website, in this archive, um, that were taken on the same day. And they're actually taken on Prince's birthday um, in April. We were still in quarantine here, um, and I think most places, but um, because of the quarantine, also Prince like lost their job, as many of us probably, and um, I celebrated their birthday with them here in the house. Um, and so I had forgotten about that, that it was on that same day, it was your birthday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Eh, la segunda foto que fue, eh, bueno, el luego, es que nunca en mi vida he podido descansar. Tengo 23 años, eh, soy extranjero y soy negro. Entonces, siempre he tenido que trabajar y trabajar. Y, ¿hacéis también? Yeah, so, um, she's saying that um, the other part of the portrait is that they feel like up until this, oh, they feel like they haven't really had ever a time to just rest. Um, they're 23, uh, an immigrant, black, um, and they feel like in their experience, Yeah, they've just always been working or moving um, without a moment to, to rest. Y esa es la primera vez en mi vida en la que puedo descansar y dedicarme a mis estudios eh, porque Jime siempre impulsa eso como una hermana mayor. Eh, oh my God, estoy muy nervioso porque hace dos meses eh, fui diagnosticado con VIH y todo el amor que he recibido de parte de Jimé me hace sentir de que mi diagnóstico no es una excusa para lo que yo voy a hacer más adelante y que puedo amar y que voy a tener mucho éxito. Y así está siendo. Entonces, es muy lindo y muy importante para mí, siendo latina, en gay, estar aquí en esta exposición y que el resto del mundo sepa mi historia. Y eso es gracias a Jimé. Ay, just saying that um, they're finally getting a chance to like study again, to, to like take a moment to themselves. Um, and they were sharing that um, two months ago they were diagnosed with HIV. Um, and they were kind of feeling like, wow, like, where is that? How is that going to translate into my life? Like, is it going to be something that stops me? Um, and they were just saying that, um, like, I guess the love that we are giving to each other, like, is allowing them to, to see that it doesn't have to be, like, they continue to live, um, like, truthfully and courageously, um, and continue to do all, all their dreams that they have. And so, um, they're, like, all that to say that this, um, project is important to them because they feel like, um, they're being able to be seen like across the world and their story be heard through this portrait. Eh, gracias. gracias. <laughs> um, cool, thank you. Um, can I, I, yeah. Can I, please be seated. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah. yeah. Wanna, so, Prince uh, mentioned this idea of time too. And I wanted to ask both you and Bianca and Madrine and Prince, 
what does it mean for this project to be happening, you know, right now in this moment? You mentioned you went back to Peru, so some of your family is still here in New York or in Miami or in different places. Also, uh, how quarantine um, has come up in some of the stories that are being shared. So I'm curious, as you're all kind of looking back, but also looking at this archive in the moment and looking forward the way Prince is looking forward, you know, how is all of that coming together through this, um, through Seke Fue Asi? For sure. Yeah, I think um, there was a few folks that responded um, to the prompt and the and looking at themselves in the photo, thinking about like, yeah, that, that future, that, that, that moment or like the future that existed in that moment, like no longer exists, right? Like whatever we all thought was going to be the future <laughs> when those portraits were taken, because most of them are from 2019, 2018, um, no longer exists for any of us, right? Like it's just, yeah. And so I think that has been um, both a place of like hurt and pain, but also thinking about how, how can we live in this present um, and what that means for us as, as queer and trans folks, right? Living in a world that um, is very antagonistic towards our our lives and our and our like existence. Um, so I'll say I'll say that. Uh, but yeah, when I open it up to see V and Matrin, si Prince quiere decir algo sobre el tiempo, no como que. ¿Entiendes la pregunta? No, pero me perdí en ti. Mejor dímela. Espérate, voy a dejar que alguien responda y te explico. Okay. If anybody wants to respond, um, and now I'll just talk to Prince. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, I think for me, looking back at these porches and thinking about what's happening now, um, like I alluded to, you know, that was a, even though I felt loved and, you know, I was in community with him, it was a pretty tough time for me. Um, and I think also I smile a little bit because I made it, you know, I survived. Brooklyn was hard in those days. I had I wasn't, you know, I wasn't eating properly. It was, I, didn't, I had like four jobs <laughs> and I could barely make it. And, you know, just looking back at that, it's like, whoa, you know, those were, that was a time in Brooklyn where I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And then, you know, when, with this quarantine situation and so much uncertainty, I think this exhibition is just a reminder that, you know, as long as you have family and community, you know, you, you'll make it, you know, even if it's just one person or a group of folk. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what I'm in regards to, like, comparing it to right now, you know, I think I'll be okay. Yeah, also, um, these photos <clears throat> mark the, the year before Hime left, like, these photos were taken knowing that Hime was going to be leaving. Um, and then some were also taken in, in Peru more, more recently. Um, and in the, I mean, I think this would have happened anyway, but even at the start of quarantine, I think I felt more connect, even more connected to my friends that had moved back home, you know, like, like it was in uh, Colombia. I think one night we had, we had like a karaoke night and we were in like four different countries. <laughs> um, and so this, moment I think has also pushed us to connect with each other even more deeply um and yeah I think he is coming back to New York in March for like the physical opening which is like something for us all to look forward to and so yeah it, it's it's really beautiful to to have this now this digital archive now to to look through until then until he comes back <laughs> Um, also, I'll share, like, I think, yeah, I think, going back to your question, Susanna, like, definitely one of the hardest parts for my decision to move back here was to leave my, my chosen family, because um, it's really hard to build that, and um, I, like, recently had my astral chart, like, my, my, my birth chart, my birth chart, my birth chart read to me, and I learned that, um, I, I don't know too much, but my Chiron is whatever in this placement that it means that I'm I'm someone that's constantly looking for family. And I was really shook by being told that by a person that doesn't know my experience. Um, 
because that's been really true for me, you know? And so, yeah, it's really difficult when you um, start to build what feels like a family um, in all the ways, you know, like with all the like also drama and the love and the like all of that um, and, and be far away. But I feel like, yeah, as Bianca saying, like, I felt very connected to everyone, even if we're not physically in the same place. And it's exciting also to continue to build more family, like Prince, you know, like now that we're so connected and like we're in this space together. Um, so yeah. ¿Qué te quería decir algo? Um, es como me siento, como... Del tiempo, o sea, de, de mirar, como que mirar a ese momento del retrato. Uh -huh. um, yo soy bailarín y performer, entonces... Todo el mundo sabe que soy carismático, pero antes de estas fotos y antes de esto, solo me limitaba a sonreír cuando estaba en el escenario y cuando mm -hmm. estaba bailando. Wait. Okay. So, Prince saying that um, she's a dancer uh, and a performer, and so she feels like people, like, they really only allow themselves to smile, or we're only really smiling, like, during performances, or, you know, like, for a performance. Um, yeah. Okay, entonces... Luego de las fotos, eh, de hecho en la foto salgo con una sonrisa muy grande. Sí. Siento que puedo sonreír en cada momento y que no debo guardar mis sentimientos solo para mi baile, sino para mi vida. Mm. Eh, Wait, okay. okay. <laughs> so they're saying that in the photo, um, as you all saw, they have like a really big smile. Um, and they were just saying that that portrait, like that, looking at that photograph, right? Like, like looking back at the photograph, um made them realize that they don't have to save smiling for a performance like they can just smile for themselves um and their like everydayness and so yeah. uh okay entonces ahora me siento hermosa 24 7 cada día <laughs> eh, me siento en paz y siento que mis sueños ya no solo son sueños sino son metas mm. tangibles que se van a lograr oh. Okay, yeah, she's just saying that now um, they feel beautiful 24-7 <laughs> um, and they smile and they feel like their dreams are actually goals that they're moving towards. Um, yeah. Gracias. <laughs> you know, I want to bring up something like with your project, I thought a lot about this essay by Bell Hooks called Home Place, a Site, a Site of Resistance. Yeah. Um, and um, because your family is like a home, like that's what it, it's not a physical space, but an actual uh, space of community. And um, you mentioned before, like, you know, there's more visibility, right, for queer and trans folk. But yet at the same time, I feel there's more violence. There's more. So how, how, did, how do you feel your, your um, project builds that space of resistance for your community? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we live in a very, very anti-trans um, world globally. Um, and it's very evident in like the consistent murders of um, trans women, of trans folks, especially black trans women. Um, and it's really painful to have to, or to just hold that, <laughs> to just know that and hold that. Um, And I feel like often, like when trans folks are murdered, when trans women are murdered, like we see these images of them, right? Like we see this one image of them that then becomes the image that we see. Um, but like, like trans people have lives, we have lives, you know? And so um, it's it, <laughs> like to be known only in death um, is, we deserve much more than that. <laughs> and so I feel like, yeah, that, that for me is important. Like how, how are we able to record our stories like while we're here? Um, and one thing that I write about a little bit um, in the statement in the website is like, our lives are sacred. And so, um, especially like how, how are we then recording our stories while we're still alive? Um, and I feel like Yeah, one thing that was really important to me is like that we're recording these moments that feel like every day, um, like every day, everydayness, the everydayness of our lives, I think is the sacredness, you know, like 
It doesn't have to be something big. Like we don't have to, as Prince was just saying, like we don't have to be performing. Like we don't have to be like, I don't know, um, doing a photo shoot, doing whatever, like doing, like being in the lights, like just an everydayness of like being at home in the kitchen, like being in bed, like staying in bed all day with each other, like whatever, like those moments are sacred and, and that's also our lives, you know, and, and that, that needs to be celebrated. And so, um, yeah, so I feel like, that that yeah that's that's kind of what i yeah <laughs> i i know we're we're running a bit out of time but speaking of bringing people to light again something in the time that we've worked with you you've been so generous with your practice with your collaborators um and i just want to make sure that isamna has just a moment to uh to get a word in because you've built you've helped Hime build such an amazing platform that I know, I hope you all after this event are able to go back in. Um, it's through El Museo's website or you can go to um and really explore and get to know everybody. I was telling Madrine and Bianca and Prince even before they came on to the Zoom, I felt like I knew you all just from having heard your voices before. So it's a powerful place to to explore, um, Isamna, if you wanna just say a word or two. Um, and thank you, I'm excited to in, like bring Isamna uh, to talk about our process of building this website. And I'm just so grateful for you and, and thank you. Yeah, I would love for you to share just a little bit of the experience of building, of building the site. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think from the beginning, right? I think we had about a month and a half working together um, in the project. And from the first couple of weeks of how I, how exhilarated like the momentum was, right? Like it was super powerful to begin with all the ideas, all the content, all the images. And um, I met um, Hime last year. And so, um, being able to have met a couple of people like within the group has been um so beautiful like i feel like it's also brought such an opening of like my desire of wanting to rebuild and like have a stronger community um so being able to work digitally and make this archive for me was just amazing like on the technical aspect of it um this was this is my first collective <laughs> first website project um, mm -hmm. so for it to have been blessed in the way that it has been especially like coming into this particular moment like I'm super grateful and appreciative um, so thank you thank you for um, really bringing me into the sacred space um, and community as well I really appreciate it okay. <laughs> Hi, thank you, Itzana. It's been really beautiful working with you. And it was really important for me to highlight. Like, I feel like so many times in these, like, in virtual projects, like, um, it's important to just know who's behind everything, you know, because uh, our work is important and um, we're in community here. And so it's, yeah, it's special to know. Like, yeah, for me, this whole project has been a labor of love in all the ways, you know, and like, and like, yeah, trying to make space for folks to like move at the pace they need to um and like contribute in the ways that they want to and need to um and yeah so it's been really beautiful to work with everyone <laughs> well i want to thank you all again so much like I, I keep saying i feel like um you're all so brave and open for letting us into um letting us see you as yourselves and sharing such intimate words with all of us so um, Kime, we're so happy that your project is part of La Trienal Estamos Bien. And as we mentioned, um, these same portraits will be on the walls of El, Muse of El Museo in March when La Trienal opens. But um, in other exciting news, El Museo is opening as of this Saturday uh, with the show Tayer Boricua, a political print shop in New York curated by Rodrigo Mora. So um, please, you know, go online, book your tickets. We'll be open from 12 to 5 on Saturdays and Sundays. So we want to see you all. It's great to see you um, on Zoom, but we want to see you all in, in life, in real life. 
And yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. I see so many names from the project that are here with us today. And um, it's such a, such a pleasure to be somehow connected to all of you. I just want to quickly say that, um, hey, May, please see this project as a testimony of people finding comfort in you and trusting you and um, feeling like they are safe with you. So that I want to just say thank you for. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all the babies that are in the chat. <laughs> I love you all so much. Thank you for being part of this. Um, <laughs> I'm like out of words. <laughs> but, um, but, <laughs> sí. uh, um, puedo confirmar de que Jime tiene muchas plantas aquí <laughs> y que también, <laughs> también se, se desvela haciendo el proyecto porque yo le he visto y que es un orgullo que una hermana peruana esté allá. Entonces. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Princess is saying that she can confirm that I have a lot of plants in my home. <laughs> that I've been working tirelessly on this project because um, they've seen me working um, and they're just proud to, to be sharing this moment. Um, and yeah, Peru. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thanks again. And um, you can watch this again on El Museo in Tu Casa to relive this special night. And we hope you come back and, and visit the website. So thank you all again. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Congratulations, Jime. Felicidades. Congratulations, Jime. Beautiful. <laughs> Wait, Congratulations. Yes, oh. ocean. Bring ocean. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ocean's part of the chosen family, also. Yeah. Of my son. <laughs> Bye.